Are you tired of the manual process of managing access requests to a data model in your Power BI workspace? Do you feel overwhelmed by managing approvals for every user in need of report access? Perhaps you also need to document approvals for compliance purposes. If you answered yes to any of these questions, you've come to the right place. In this report series, I guide you through creating a Power app coupled with a Power Automate flow, streamlining the entire process for you. This is part one, where we will delve into understanding the problem, presenting the solution and discussing prerequisites. If you missed any of the previous segments or wish to explore what's next, check out the videos in the top right corner or the description box below. Let's start with the intro. Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and I'm here to guide you through the world of Power BI. If this is your first time around here, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. By doing so, you won't miss any of my Power BI videos. It means a lot to me and helps others to find content like this. Alrighty, let's start by deep diving into the problem. As report developers, our responsibility doesn't stop at publishing a data model and report. I'm certain you've encountered the additional time sink involved in setting up access to workspaces or reports. In other words, managing user access to ensure everyone's permissions are configured correctly. Also, my experience with large organizations has shown that in many instances, users require approval before accessing specific datasets. Typically, this involves their manager's consent or the team who is responsible for that particular data. The typical process for setting up user permissions tend to follow a similar pattern. The report is ready to go live, it is published to a workspace. Then the report developer spends time in adding individuals to the workspace, report app, or group designed for access management, sometimes using a combination of these options. However, there is an important step before this can happen. Checking with the user's manager to confirm their access to the report. What complicates this process is the occasional random access request that arrives without context or identification, leaving us, report developers, in the dark about the access and why we need to approve that. If you're part of a dev team or assisting others in creating Power BI reports, this process can quickly become a time-consuming task. After all, no one wants to be stuck chasing after others for access and approval, right? Furthermore, manually keeping track of who requested access, when these requests were made and where they stand in the approval process can be a boring task. In addition, in large organizations, ensuring traceability and approval history becomes critical. Searching through emails or Teams chats for this information can be difficult and might not fully align with so SOX compliance standards. But wait, there is a solution. In this series, I'm exciting to unveil my ingenious solution that addresses all these challenges. Yes, you heard me right, every single one I've mentioned earlier. This fully automated solution tackles access requests, secures managerial approvals, and notifies users and the BI team upon approval or rejection. All by remaining within the Microsoft ecosystem, making it easier to implement within your organization. It's important to note that many elements in this solution are customizable, whether you need approvals from specific individuals or teams, the managerial approval component can be effortlessly adjusted to fit those requirements, amongst other changes. In these videos, I'll be using Bilingual Analytics' not-so-complex organization that looks like this. We will harness the power of Power Automate, Power Apps, Power BI, Office 365 and our rock-solid logic to bring this comprehensive solution to life. Now, it's time to switch over to my PC and begin setting up all the prerequisites. Before we even begin, let's clear up a few points. I'll be using Office 365 groups for user grouping purposes rather than Entro groups or Azure Active Directory, considering that most business report developers might not have access to Entra. However, Office 365 groups should be universally accessible, which works in our favor. Our initial step involves creating two Office 365 groups. The first group will manage all users who may require access to request entry to the report. This group will be critical in driving access within the Power Apps app and Power Automate flow. I should rather say that in case of Power Automate, we are going to add this group as a run-only user. This setup allows everyone within the group to execute the flow. I'll name this group BILA all 
an abbreviation for Bilingual Analytics All Employees. The second group we will set up is designed to manage access to our Power BI data model. Though today's focus is on data model access, this approach can be seamlessly adapted for workspaces, apps, reports, and more. The key takeaway here is that using a group instead of individual users significantly streamlines your access management workflow. Further down the track, in a separate tutorial, I show you how to elevate the entire process by integrating role-level security into the equation. But for now, let's take things one step at a time. Having our two groups in place, it's essential to ensure a well-structured org chart. Why? Because in the flow, I'll be relying on manager approvals for granting access to the model. This means every user must have a manager assigned to them. Most companies likely have this chart established already. However, if you or your colleagues from the IT department need guidance, let me show you how easy it is to set it up. Simply log into Microsoft 365 admin portal, navigate to the user section, and choose active users. Select the user and update the manager field on the right hand side. A quick way to verify this is by logging into Teams, selecting a user, and clicking on the organization button. As you can see, it's a straightforward process. Lastly, we will create a SharePoint site dedicated to serving as our compliance data storage. This site will keep certain approval process details. However, I'm not going to save information about rejections, since that implies the user won't gain access to the data. The SharePoint site will be simply named BILA Report Access Outcome. Great, we are almost done with all the prep. To ensure our task today isn't hindered by licensing concern, I'll include a helpful link to the description box below where you can check Power Platform licensing. However, I'll assume it's all sorted on your end. I hope this video sheds some light on the issue I've faced many, many times before and provides a clear roadmap for what's needed before diving into the automated access request too. As mentioned in the intro, you will find the link to the second part of this series at the top right corner and the description box below once I publish that as well. Follow along because this solution has the potential for substantial time saving and ticks all the compliance boxes. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them into the comment section below. Since you stay till the end, I'm confident you find value in this video. If that's the case, please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Don't forget to explore more of my tutorials like the ones above me. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.